We're back, baby. Welcome to another episode of Break the Silence. I'm your host, Cyborg, in traditional KG fashion. We just watched the Boston Celtics, my Boston Celtics, dismantle the Miami Heat in game four of the Eastern Conference Finals to tie the series at two apiece. I am stoked after last game's performance in game three. I was devastated. I couldn't sleep. My diet was weird. But I'm back. I am back. You'll see me everywhere. I'll be in public. I'll be I'll be on social media again. I'll be watching sports shows. I I, I can return to work. I can finally I'm back. I'm back. But what a performance by the Boston Celtics. I'm stoked. Um, this is why the 2022 Boston Celtics, and I'm specifically saying 2022 because the first half of the season in 2021, they were terrible. 2022 Boston Celtics experience is so frustrating because when they play like this, they look like the best team in the NBA and they look like one of the best defenses we've seen in the last 15 years. But then they lay stinkers like they did in game three. But tonight was a heck of a performance and a heck of a bounce back. And, and that's why this team's a little different than before. They uh, had, a, had a traditional, well, let's just say they would get uh, beat up and then they wouldn't be able to bounce back from it. Um, but uh, their resi resiliency tonight was very impressive. Um, with no Marcus Smart, defense still performed at a high level. The Miami Heat had one point with three minutes, uh, three something left in that first quarter, which is unbelievable. They said it was the um, longest in the last 25 years that team's gone without scoring a field goal. That's unbelievable defense by the Celtics. The Heat also came out like they didn't really care to win the game too much. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, this game didn't matter for them. I don't know what the whole thought process there. Eric Spolstra is one of the best coaches in the NBA. I was not a believer for a very long time, um, but at this point, I think I am because I, I don't give you that much credit for winning a title with LeBron, Wade, and Bosh. I just don't. But the fact that he's been able to get this team back to the Eastern Conference Finals and the Finals a couple years ago in the bubble, that to me was more valuable than the titles he won with LeBron and them. Because, in fact, you could argue he did a poor job that first year. Maybe you blame LeBron more for losing to Dallas. But at least I, I would blame the coaching a little bit. Um, but I'm just surprised at how flat the heat came out. Um, Jimmy Butler, he, I, I, I don't fully know how to understand the Jimmy Butler experience. It's so... There are times you watch him and you're like, okay, that guy's a top 10 player easy in the NBA. And then there are times you watch him and you're like, man, he's not a very good shooter. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know fully how to rank Jimmy Butler. And I was making my, and at some point here soon, I'm going to release, and I'm going to wait till after the playoffs, but I'm going to release my top 20 players in the NBA currently. And and at times, like, it's hard for me to know where to rank Jimmy Butler because he keeps carrying his team super far. And, like, I think his impact on winning is very strong. But also, like, I don't know what happened in a game like tonight. I don't know if he was in a bad attitude or 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 what exactly happened there. Um, Bam struggled a little more against Robert Williams. I think we saw the impact of having Rob Williams back. Um, I'm going to be honest, there's still a couple minutes left in this game. Um, I decided to start filming a little early. Al Horford just hit a three. Um, but uh, Rob Williams all over the court. Dudes, I, Rob Williams is my second favorite player on the Celtics and honestly close to my favorite player. Tatum's probably, I think you got to say he's your favorite, but um, Rob's second for me. Um, he plays with so much energy and he, he, he like plays his role so well where I think like a lot of big men – don't always understand their limitations where um, a player like um, and my dad's a huge Utah jazz fan. So I watch a ton of the jazz and I'm not dissing on Rudy Gobert because he's an awesome player, but like there are times when Rudy Gobert gets a rebound and then tries to like start dribbling it up the court and then get stripped. And you're like, what made you think that you could do that? 
Rob Williams never does anything outside of the scope of his abilities. Um, he's, a, he's actually been a really good free throw shooter for us in the playoffs, but he, he rebounds, defends, catches oops, sets screens. Like, he plays his role top notch, and that's why I love Rob Williams so much. Um, Marcus Smart, we'll see what happened. I, I was actually, I was, I'm still shocked he came back at the end of last game. Um, to, yeah, I, I can't believe he came back, and I was not surprised at all he was out tonight. Um, we'll see if he makes it back for next game or not. Um, going forward, I, I think it's at least something to watch Jason Tatum's shoulder. Um, Jason was awesome tonight. Tatum was a great bounce back game. Um, but his three point shot was really poor. You don't really see Tatum airball three pointers and he airballed two and then missed a couple other ones pretty badly, including missing some free throws early in the game. So I just think, um, as if you're a Celtics fan or just a basketball fan in, ge fan in general, um, I would monitor, uh, Tatum in these next couple next game. Like, let's see if, uh, his shoulders feeling right. Jalen Brown had another pretty rough night. Luckily, with how good their defense was, didn't matter too much. Derek White, and I, I'm going to give this man a massive shout out because Derek White seemed like, why did the Celtics trade for this man? When you watch some of the games, he was so underwhelming. You're like, what? What does he do well? And tonight he was really, really good filling in for Marcus Smart. He he did a good job directing the offense. He scored seven quick points to get the Celtics out and running, get us momentum off the rip, and just put us in a great spot to to win this game. So all the props in the world to Derek White. Um, who else? Al Horford was unbelievable, even though he didn't really score. Um, he was unbelievable defensively. Ime Udoka, heck of a job, man. I love... I love him. I, I was a Brad Stevens fan, but Ime Udoka's he 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 he's figured out how to pull strings um, with this team that that Brad Stevens just couldn't. There's a saying that I love that says, um, "Never accept anything in a win that you wouldn't in a loss." And in the third quarter, late in the third quarter, the Celtics were kind of not playing very well, and we watched Ime Udoka just go crazy screaming at, um, I think it was Grant Williams, but also potentially Tatum. Tatum had a bad turnover where he got double teamed and got the ball stripped and they gave up a layup. And Ime Odoka called a timeout and just was ripping into him. And at that point, you're up 25 points, but Ime Odoka lived by the mindset that if I wouldn't accept this if we were losing, I'm not accepting it when we're up. And I love that mindset. It's taking every play seriously and to start the year, we saw the Celtics blow a bunch of big leads. But you may built in the mindset of these players to keep pushing and keep playing hard. And that's the reason that the Celtics really pulled this out. I'm looking over the score right now. Celtics are now up 31 points. Um, awesome performance. I'm super excited. Going into next game, back in Miami. It'll be interesting to see what the Heat respond as. This has been a weird series. Um, both teams have... Laid some real stinkers. I was pretty shocked the Celtics lost game three, and that's why I was so demoralized. But it wouldn't shock me. Nothing would shock me in this series, to be honest. I'm, I'm going to pick the Celtics to win next game simply because I don't think you want to play a game seven in Miami. But... Miami's going to play. I think they'll play better. We'll see if Tyler Hero is back or not. He hasn't been great for him this series, but I'm stoked. We're moving on to game five. Tied 2-2. And one more time for the road. Cyborg out.